What's up, everybody? This is Alex from Fireside Giants and Empire Sports Media Production, and you're listening to the Fireside Giants podcast. If you're a diehard Giants fan, you've come to the right place. Daily episodes, interviews, draft content, and so much more. Make sure to drop a like and a subscription below on YouTube, and don't forget to leave a content. We love to engage with everybody. If you did not check out our video from yesterday, breaking down Ohio State tight end Jeremy Rucker, we think he'd be a great option for the Giants in the mid-rounds of the 2022 NFL Draft. He is a phenomenal pass catcher, really did not get as many reps as you'd hope last season in Ohio State's offense as a pass catcher. He's also a pretty willing blocker, so I would uh, implore you to go check out that video. Really great draft content there for you guys and a look at a potential tight end who could fit the bill um, for this Giants team and new and new tight ends coach Andy Bischoff. But today, we want to talk about three Buffalo Bills players that are hitting free agency that the Giants could look at and say, you know what, these are cost-efficient guys, you know, they're trying to, you know, kind of, I guess, speed up that transition. A lot of coaches from other teams love to bring in guys that they previously coached, familiar faces to help the culture, um, you know, the schematics, whatever it might be. There are three guys we have in mind, Anthony, before we dive into them. How are you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing great, and I'm really excited to take a look at these three players. Of course, Joe Shane coming over from Buffalo. He had a hand in bringing the, these guys over to the Bills. So it would make sense now that they're free agents and he's with the Giants, he might want to bring them over to the New York Giants roster, right? Try and build with familiar pieces, especially on the offensive side of the ball, because we know that the Giants offensive scheme under Jason Garrett and Freddie Kitchens was one thing, and Brian Dable and Mike Kafka's offensive scheme should be something completely and utterly different. Shouldn't even look the same. Like, seriously, you take the principles of a spread offense from Buffalo or a West Coast with some deep shot elements, offense from Kansas City, and compare that with the, the old school 2005 Jason Garrett offensive scheme. Like, it's night and day the difference. It's a power run scheme versus a spread offense. They're completely different. Out of 11 personnel, that's where you're going to see the Giants really operate, and that's not where you saw the Giants operate in the past. You saw a lot of 12 personnel, which the Buffalo Bills under Brian Dable use the least amount in the NFL last season. So the scheme is going to change a lot, and in order for the Giants to maximize the potential of the scheme, they've got to get the right talent in there. And so that's why Brian Dable might be really inclined to tell Joe Shane, hey, I need some familiar faces around me that can help me implement this scheme and get the players in place and get this thing going. Absolutely. And that's a, a big reason why the offense is probably going to, you know, probably consider one of these free agents. And it's none other than Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, Trubisky's had his fair share of ups and downs, right? He's been a pro bowl guy. He's been a legitimate starter. You know, some thought he was going to be the long-term solution in Chicago. And then bam, his talent just disappeared. Like he really struggled. Um, and then last season, he joined the Buffalo Bills as the backup for Josh Allen. And learning behind Josh Allen, maybe, you know, that resetting of his uh, scenario gave him a little bit more confidence, you know, just kind of, I guess, starting from fresh, from scratch, and under Brian Dable, right? And they obviously have a rapport. So it makes logical sense that the Giants would say, you know what? Mitch Trubisky knows what Brian Dable likes to do on offense. He knows his style. He knows his plays. It would be make obvious sense to consider him in free agency. Now, um, looking at the AAV, the potential pay, uh, for next season, I, I don't know exactly how much I would offer a player like Mitchell Trubisky. The Giants and most people would say and, and agree, I'd rather spend a little bit more on a backup quarterback because Daniel Jones has had his fair share of injuries. The the When he runs the football, he makes bad decisions at times. He runs headfirst into guys. That is a problem. He's gotten some concussions. He's hurt his hamstring. Um, you know, he's picked up some things here and there and the neck injury. So there's a lot to, to consider when it comes to Daniel Jones. I think having a competent backup is a necessity. Some people might say Mar Marcus Mariota, but I think Mitchell Trubisky makes the most sense given the familiarity with Brian Dable. Um, now how much would I pay him? I'd maybe give him a, if depending on if the giants decide they want to keep Daniel Jones for the fifth year, I'd say a two year contract worth, I don't know, $8 million. So he's making 4 million per season, uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe 7 million over two years. I think that might be competent. And some, some people might even say he'll push Daniel Jones a little bit in practice too, because Trubisky is not a bad quarterback, right? Daniel Jones is unproven. I think he's better than Mitch Trubisky, you know, since his fall off, but Trubisky's he's made a pro bowl. I mean, then again, pro bowls are kind of just BS for the most part, but you know, we did throw 3,223 yards, 24 touchdowns during that season at a 66.6% .6 completion rate. He's proven he can do it. Um, now the question is, can he do it again? And can he push Daniel Jones and make him a better quarterback and, and force DJ to play and practice harder? That's kind of what I'm looking for. You know, at least put some competition, light a fire under DJ's butt. Just don't give him the job, you know, make him earn it. Um, I think that's a reasonable thing to ask, Anthony. When you're looking at Mitchell Trubisky, do you think that's a guy that the Giants should definitely consider in free agency? 
I think Trubisky is a guy that makes perfect sense for the Giants, and there's a few reasons why. Uh, the number one reason being that Daniel Jones has had an injury history. You know, like you need to get a quarterback with at least some upside. Mike Glennon was not a good signing, right? Because A, he has a zero playing style similarity to Daniel Jones. Like they don't play the game at all in the same way. So Daniel Jones goes out, you change your whole offensive scheme just to get Mike Glennon on the field. And that's not what you want to do. You don't want to change your scheme to get Mike freaking Glennon on the field, but that's the mistake that the Giants were making. So going forward, I think it would be beneficial for the Giants. You know, they've got a quarterback like Daniel Jones. Backing him up, that guy should have a similar playing style. I'm not saying that Mitch Trubisky and Daniel Jones are the same players or they play that much alike, but it needs to be somewhat similar at the very least. So when you have Mitch Trubisky step in, I think that there's more of that continuity with Daniel Jones. The offense can remain the same. I think Trubisky can run the same offense as Daniel Jones. But there's a couple other reasons why he makes sense. Of course, you mentioned that Brian Dable, offensive coordinator of the Bills, they went and signed Mitchell Trubisky as the backup quarterback. So he was basically sitting there learning from all of these guys that we've ranted and raved about for the past two months, right? We've ranted and raved about Brian Dable, Ken Dorsey, and Josh Allen. All of those guys have been working around Mitch Trubisky, helping him become a better player. Now, you said Mitch Trubisky is not a bad quarterback, and I think I'll agree with you. I'll say this. He's a bad starting quarterback, but as a backup with starter experience, he's also young. He's got some upside if, you know, maybe he has a career turnaround like a Tannehill situation. You never bank on that. You never expect that to happen, but it's always possible. So you could see something like that happening with Mitchell Trubisky in the right scheme, developing around the right players. And I'll also throw this out there. If you take a look at Daniel Jones's first three years and compare it to Mitchell Trubisky's first three years, the career stats are basically the same. I'll throw this. I'll read it out there real quick and before we move on to the next players. But Daniel Jones, through his first three seasons, 8,398 yards, 45 touchdowns, 29 interceptions, a 63% completion percentage, 84 quarterback rating, and a 6.62 yards per attempt. Mitchell Trubisky, 8,554 yards, so like 150 more. 48 touchdowns, three more, 29 interceptions, the same number, 63.3%, so 0.6 higher, 85.8 quarterback rating, so 1.5 higher, and 6.68 yards per attempt, which is 0 0.06 higher. And then there's a kind of a key stat difference here, career three-plus touchdown passing games. Trubisky had 10, Jones only had three, so you could honestly make the argument that Trubisky's career got off to a better start than Daniel Jones's. And yeah, Daniel Jones, the Giants, they've done everything to screw him up. So it's not really a fault of his own. At times, he has looked like a really good franchise quarterback. But I do think there's a lot to be said about the benefits that having a guy like Mitchell Trubisky backing up Daniel Jones could bring to the Giants in terms of an insurance plan. And then I also want to add, you mentioned his contract could maybe be a two-year contract. And I'm going to say that's a perfect idea. And here's why, right? If Daniel Jones were to go down this season, maybe he misses eight games. Trubisky steps in and on those eight games looks like a starting quarterback well now he's going to go into free agency and get starting quarterback money like he's not going to get the five million per year he'll get the 10 to 15 million per year but if you have him on that two-year deal you'll get that bargain in the second year it's like prove it right like you did it in this half of a season now you get the next year to really prove it before you go out and get your bag in free agency so i like the two-year deal i think that's a really good idea alex yeah and i'll even pile on a little bit for for the two-year concept is the Giants can't afford to have another season like they did last year. They can't have another Mike Lennon, Jake Fromm situation um, with no offensive line. They need to have a competent backup because if shit hits the fan and Daniel Jones is not playing well or he's struggling or he gets injured, they need to have someone that can step in and run the offense at, a, at an average level, right? That's all we're asking for, just average. Um, not below average, not above average, just average. That's what your backup quarterback um, you know, you're probably going to get a little bit below average, but ultimately Mitchell Trubisky is good enough to, to score some touchdowns and put some points on the board. And that's what we're really asking for. We don't want the dead cat arm, Mike Lennon anymore. Jake Fromm, the guy couldn't throw the ball downfield. Um, you know, I, I, I want to say the offensive line didn't put either of them in good positions, but Mike Lennon, there was times where he was standing in the pocket and he had plenty of time and he just missed throws. Um, and he, and he noodle armed a couple of them downfield that were way underthrown. Um, and, and I remember them very, very <laughs> clearly. If you have a guy like Mahomes, you have a guy like Josh Allen, they're hitting that guy in stride. I mean, anyone, any starting quarterback really is hitting those guys in stride. So um, unfortunately, the Giants are kind of put in a position where they have to find a competent backup. And Mitch Trubisky makes the most sense. Now, the next guy on the list is Levi Wallace, the cornerback out of Buffalo, right? So he spent four years in Buffalo. He started all 17 games last year with Tredavious White going down with injury. He picked up 15, or rather, sorry, 10 passes defended, 58 combined tackles. He actually played pretty damn well for the most part. Um, you know, he gave up, let's see, 498 yards and four touchdowns. So, you know, he, on paper by the stats, he had a better season than James Bradbury did. 
given how familiar he is with Brian Dable, and I know he's on the defensive side, but still Brian Dable definitely knows him pretty well. Um, I and I believe that he could be a decent option. He's a, un, a formerly undrafted guy in 2018, ran a four six three out of Alabama. Um, you know, we played well last year. So if you're looking at him, maybe he'll cost you, let's say, two years, three years, 15 million, right? Three years, 15 million. You can push it back, push the money back a couple of years. And don't get scared of the, the concept of pushing money back. Every single team does it. And fi- $5 million isn't going to break the bank. It's always, even if he ends up being a backup, it's you're, it's always good to have a backup cornerback that's going to come in and play at a high level. So when I'm looking at uh, Levi Wallace, I'm not exactly sure um, if he would be a fit, a scheme fit under a Wink Martindale, but I will say his familiarity and the, in Buffalo is very aggressive. Um, I know they have those two really strong safeties of Jordan Poyer and, and Micah Hyde back there, but I think those cornerbacks are ever more important because they do like to blitz a lot with those guys and they do come up in the run a lot on the play action. So I think Levi, Levi Wallace would be a good fit for the giants. Now it depends on the money. Like the giants don't have a ton of money, right? Uh, Dave Gettleman does want a rather Dave Gettleman. God, I still in my head. Um, <laughs> he's rent free in my head forever. Now, um, I do think Joe Shane is looking to get $40 million. That's what he said. Trying to clear up $40 million in cap space, how much they're a- actually able to spend is yet to be seen. So we'll see, but you know, Levi Wallace does make sense, especially if they cut James Bradbury, if they don't cut James Bradbury, you can forget about Le- Levi Wallace doesn't make any sense, but that, I think that the contention, uh, you know, it, what has to happen is James Bradbury has to be cut or traded for Levi Wallace to really have an opportunity to sign with big blue. Yeah. Um, and, and that's a really strong possibility. The giants, it seems like, you know, every day I'm reading a new article. I've even wrote a couple of those articles where the giants might have to cut James Bradbury in order to free up cap space. And I've seen people who were James Bradbury's biggest fan, you know, like Michael frequent viewer of this channel called him the blanket, gave him a nickname and pro- professed his love for him on the internet. Now he says you should cut him because it's just not worth the money to have James Bradbury around. So people are trading on or uh, turning on him, and there's a really good chance he could get cut. But I'll throw out some good statistics that I have on Levi Wallace real quickly before we move on to the next guy. Levi Wallace played a big part in the defense for the Buffalo Bills once they lost star cornerback Tredavious White. This is from PFF. Uh, he maintained a high level play down the stretch, earning a 68.5 coverage grade on 993 snaps, which by PFF's metrics is about average to above, which is really what you want from a little depth piece cornerback like this. Uh, he's played at least 400 snaps in every season since signing as an undrafted free agent in 2018 and has never earned the grade below 60.0, which PFF considers to be a strong floor at a very volatile position like outside cornerback. So I like that a whole lot. I think, you know, in terms of just signing a guy that can be at the bare minimum an average cornerback, that's what you can get with Levi Wallace. And I think that's perfect for the New York Giants because they've had some guys go out there in the past that are just so below average and they're such liabilities. <laughs> Eli Apple, right? So hopefully Levi Wallace can just step in there, be that average guy if they're able to sign him and really just kind of be like a little piece of glue that mends some gaps in that Giants defense. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, and again, it's it's con- entirely reliant on what they do with James Bradbury. That will spark some conversation, whether it be in the draft or through free agency. The last guy on the list for us is Isaiah McKenzie, wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. McKenzie's an interesting player, right? He got benched last year at one point uh, for fumbling a kickoff, and then he came back in the playoffs and had a wildly impressive game. Um, and this year he only finished with 178 yards receiving and a touchdown, but in 2020 he had 282 yards and five touchdowns. So he does find ways to get into the end zone, which is something the giants desperately need. Um, but like I said, during the postseason, had a huge game. Um, let's see. I think it was against, uh, Buffalo and new England. He had 45 yards and he had uh, 29 yards, uh, through the air, made some really big plays. Um, and I think for the most part, McKenzie really cheap. He's going to be super cheap. The Giants need cheap quality players. Him and Brian Dable are super close. Um, they're really, really close. So that really stands out to me as a connection. That makes a lot of sense. Um, again, the Giants probably going to end up cutting Sterling Shepard. So with that being the case, they need another kind of shifty, speedy kind of guy like McKenzie. You can be really, really, really active in the pre-snap motion and doing things in the shorter portions of the field and get him into space. You know, the Giants need to find ways to get there's playmakers into space, Kadarius Tony, Saquon Barkley. Um, and, and ultimately, if you can get a guy like Isaiah McKenzie into space, give him some straight line ability, he'll take off. You know, he'll he'll make plays for you. And I think that's really uh, what we're looking for is just guys who are underrated, undervalued, who can come in and make plays for this team because ultimately, you know, <laughs> we just need it. Like there's there's no other way. If the offense does, keeps doing what they've been doing the, the past couple of years, we're going to go nowhere. But I do believe that Kafka and Brian Dable – will put together a far better scheme and unit 
uh, moving forward, Anthony. What do you think about Isaiah McKenzie? I like the idea of signing Isaiah McKenzie a lot. Um, I just found an article about contract projection for Isaiah McKenzie and free agency. The projection is one year, $1.1725 million. Dirt cheap. So it's like a minimum dirt cheap, Really, really cheap contract. You can get him for a really good deal, and he can be a solid contributor. Again, knows Brian Dable's scheme. They need players that can fit in that scheme. Also, he's a slot receiver. The Giants seem like... You know, if either Kadarius Tony's going to be the full time slot receiver, but then what are you doing with Sterling Shepard? He's likely getting cut, right? I think most Giants fans think Sterling Shepard's on the way out. So you could take another slot receiver like Isaiah McKenzie, put him back in here. Remember, Giants are going to be running a lot of 11 personnel, three receivers on the field at all times. So they need a lot of talent and depth at that position. I like Isaiah McKenzie. He's got that run after the catch ability, and he doubles as a kick and punt returner. So I think that's also really valuable. You mentioned that he fumbled there, but he still averaged almost 25 yards per uh, kick return. So that's a really solid number. That's above average. I see a lot of the times you take a look at these players and they're closer to the 20 or 18 yards per return. But McKenzie being at the 24, almost 25 is pretty impressive. And also I got to throw out there. I love his nickname. If you go on pro football reference and you look at Isaiah McKenzie, it says his nickname is Lil Dirty. And I think that's lit. And I really like that. And I would like to see Lil Dirty play for the Giants. <laughs> a little dirty. That's kind of funny. <laughs> oh man, we got Young Joko. We got a little dirty. We're gonna have a whole. We might as well get Eminem. Get the whole rapping gang on there. <laughs> a Fifty Cent running slant routes. <laughs> we might as well just go for it, man. Um, but guys, those are the three players that we have to talk about for the Buffalo Bills today. Um, let us know what you think. If if you think it's worth you know taking a shot or flyer on any of those guys, really appreciate the love lately. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. TVSO.